Hello and welcome to this new Android development tutorial. This is part 2 of how to make a calendar application for Android. In the previous tutorial we learned the basics of how calendar view works, we displayed a calendar view and we overrid overridden the set on date change listener. Okay, see the unselected date change meets out actually. So now we were able to get the select the day, the select the month, and select year. So if I run the app right now, just to check where we left the app on the previous tutorial, we have our calendar view right here. And if we click on a day, then the information gets updated, right? So now we want to be able to write something on a day, right? So we want to get input from the user. To get input from the user, we will use an edit text. So an edit text enables us to get input from the user, right? So we're gonna say edit text width. So this is after the calendar view, right? So width will be set to well this really depends we can put it after or we can put it before so let's actually put it before to make it kind of a cleaner view we can change all of these later right so you're gonna say edit text um the width of these will be much parent the height will be again 40 dp Okay, and um, I think the gravity, we don't need the gravity, but we will set the text color, text color to black. Okay, and I'll set the ID as text input, because this is the way we will get input from the user. Okay, so now if we go back to mainactivity.java, what we will do here is we will... Um, create our edit text. So we will do it after the calendar view listener. We can move it um, whatever we want later, but for now we'll do it after, right? So we're gonna say final, oops, final edit text, um, text input, and I will set this to find view by ID, r that ID that text input, right? So now I have access to the text input from the Java code. But now I have to to um, do some UI um, kind of a optimization. So let, let's run it to see what we have to do. So we want to run it to kind of feel how the app works. Okay, I'm running it now on the emulator. And as you can see here, we just have a white uh, rectangle before the calendar view, but we don't really get it. So here we have this line. This line is uh, the text view. As you can see, I'm typing and we can type right here, but we want something um, that will specify us how this will work. For example, let's say we want to um, so the design will be fixed later, right? So this is just the first kind of a stage of the application. But here I will, I will put a hint. So a hint tells us that this is an edit text and we can write something on it. So here in the edit text XML layout in the edit text um, object, we're going to say hint and we'll say write something, right? So if we run this, we will see how the hint appears on our added text on the, on the emulator, right? So right here, as you can see, it says write something, okay? So let's try to, to put it um, below the calendar view to see if it works or not. Okay, so put it in below the calendar view. Okay, let's now run the application. 
Okay, and it says write something, and if I click on it, I can still write something, which is of course awesome, right? Okay, 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 okay. Looks great, actually. So we say write something, so we can store kind of a information related to in a specific day on our calendar. Mm, but now we have to actually kind of store it, right? So we want to have a, a button that will enable us to save what we wrote, okay? So how do we do that? Well, let's, let's kind of uh, create a button before you write something thing. And again, don't worry about the UI aesthetics because we will improve that later. So we're gonna say layout width to match parent, height will be set to 40 dp. Okay. And the text of the button will say save, save content or something like that. Uh, save text. Um, or just save, or save text actually, right? Okay, so, and we will add an ID to this button that will be the save text button. Okay, okay, so now let's run the, the app to check if it works, if the button is shown and everything is working fine. Okay, so here we are and we can write something. So imagine you write something and when you're ready, you click on save text and that text will be saved on the corresponding day, but we don't uh, implement that function functionality yet. Okay, so let's try to implement it. So let's think first. We want to save the text to the current day, right? So we'll be basically saving a string uh, kind of uh, an efficient way to save a string is creating an array list. So actually what we have to do is, um, of course we have a text input, but we also have to get the button. So you're gonna say final button, um, don't forget to import the button class, and this will be the save text button we created and we will access it by writing find the ID R the ID dot save text button. Okay. And now what we want to do is we want to know where or when actually that button is being clicked. So we're gonna say save text button that set on click listener, which enables us to know when that button is clicked. And it will say new on click listener. Okay, so inside of this method, inside this on click method, we have to perform the logic we want to execute when the save text button is pressed. Okay, so for example, just to test this, I, I can do whatever I, I like here. For example, I will say text input that set text and I will set it to empty, okay? So kind of a nothing. So when I click the button, the text input uh, will be cleared, okay? So let's try to run the app and check if it works. So now I'm running the app and I will click and write something to make the keyboard appear and then write something on the text view. And then I will click on save text. And as you can see, when I click on save text, the write something um, at the text is cleared and is reseted to empty. So if I can do this over and over again, it will happen as many times as I do it. So the button is working. So this, is to, this was done to test if the button was working and it is. 
So now what we want to do when we click on the save text button. So basically what we want to do is we want to get the current day. Okay. So we want to get the current day of the calendar, right? So how can we do that? So basically you have two options here. So let's see if the calendar view provides one option. So calendar view that get um, first day of the week, get the date. So if we do and say get date, then okay, as you can see, the specification of this is get the select date in milliseconds. Okay, since January first, nineteen seventy. Okay. So this returns us the date in milliseconds. Okay. And now, so that's a get. If we say set date, we also can set the date in milliseconds, right? Okay, okay, okay. We kind of know how can we can what we, we can do here, right? So we will create an array list. Okay, so we can do lots, we can do this in lots of different ways. For example, we're going to say list of string. Okay. And of course, don't forget to import the list class. So list of string and I'll call this um, text or actually calendar text or something like that. Calendar text. Okay. Okay. Um, or calendar strings. We can then change the name. Okay, with that, and we will initialize this to new array list. Okay. So basically, when we click on here, what we want to do is we want to um, save the current uh, content of the text input into the array list. Okay, so to save it. So we go before we set text to empty, we're gonna save the text onto the calendar strings. So we're gonna say calendar strings dot add. And we will add um, text input dot get text. So when we say get text, we're getting the text that is displayed or the, actually in this case, the text that the user typed. Okay. And since this returns a char sequence, you can say get text and then that to a string, right? So this will add the current thing right there. Okay. But now we, we want to know where it's been added. So we want to know um, kind of uh, which was the day in which this was added. So maybe before adding these, we will add the date actually. So you're gonna say calendar strings that add and we're gonna say um, actually calendar view that get date. But remember, get date is a uh, is long, and we're storing these in strings. So we want to transform this with a string value off. So we get the string this. So we can think a lot of ways of doing this, you can do this in very, very um, diverse kind of, uh, of approaches. But for now, we will use these because it's kind of very, very simple, right? And we want simplicity. Okay, so that's our, um, the first thing right there. So right now, we will run it and we will actually won't see any visual changes, but the change will be occurring um, on code. So if I type something, and I click on save text, then it's cleared, but it's not only just cleared, but also saved into our array list. 
But now, how do we know that? Okay, so we have to retrieve that information. Okay, we have to retrieve that information when date is clicked. Okay, so how do we do that? How do we do that? Okay. Okay, let's try to, to figure out a cool way of doing it. So when we uh, operate the unselected date change, we want to get if the date is or isn't um, a kind of a existing or has some sort of a of of content, right? So how do we do this? So right here, we get kind of the year, the day of the month, and all of that. Okay. So basically, but we here we are storing the date using the the long method, the calendar view that get date, which returns a long data type, right? So how do we do it? Well, first, one way of doing it is we will check the list of saved entries, like right here. This means we have to put these before, so we will move this line, the calendar strings, before the set on date change listener. Okay, I'll put here for now. Okay, so so we can access it inside uh, from inside this meto. So what we're gonna do right now, we're gonna say uh, view dot get date, okay, get date, and this will return the current date. So this will be a long, right? So we have to check how this will work, right? So let's see if, if this get date will return the date we were waiting for or not. Okay, okay, okay. So, so we're gonna do a quick check right here. And what we're gonna do is create a long and we'll call it saved date. And it'll say this to calendar strings get zero. Why I'm getting zero? Well, because I am I am getting the, the zeroth element, which is the first one, this one. So this is just for testing. And of course, this is a long and this is a string. So we can um, parse long, do this. Long, parse long, and we did that, right? So now we're going to say if view that get date equals to save date okay so this is basically saying if the date that the user touched on the on the um, on the calendar is the same day that we saved uh, previously right here then restore the corresponding text so in this case of course, I'm doing everything manually. And what we have to do right here is, I will also set this text, I will move this text input before the set on date change listener to, okay? So, okay. So what we can do, if both dates are equal, are the same, I'm gonna say text input dot set text, and I'll say calendar strings, um, that get one. So one is the second one which was saved previously, right? Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So now let's see if it actually works. So let's see. So right now I'm on May 12th. So I will write something here. Hello, May 12th. Okay, and I will click on save text. So this is cleared. And I will go and press May 13th. 
and here as you can see it still says hello May 12th and even if I so there's the bug there which is kind of an unexpected behavior okay 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 so we have to change how this works what we will do instead will be um, in order to avoid com converting these and having the same format between these two what we will do here is we will uh, save these parameters the year month and day of month uh, when the user clicks on a calendar right okay okay bear with me so what we are gonna do is we will create global variables so outside the on create method we will create three integer variables so we're gonna say first int and we can do it private so private int current year okay and I'll set this to zero okay and I'll set also private int current month and we'll also set this to zero and I'll say private int current uh, what was the other current year month and day so current day and I'll set these to zero too okay so for now if we work only inside the same month we will only have to check the day okay if we, if we are inside the same year we only have to check the day and month right otherwise we have to check three integers okay so basically what we want to do every time um this method is called is to uh, update the global variables so i'm gonna say current year will be set to year okay and current month will be set to month and current day will be set to day uh, day of month actually is how this is called okay never mind so current year is set to year current month is set to month and current day is set to day of month okay so basically since we're changing the method the way we are uh, saving and retrieving the information we are just updating the current day right okay and what we want to do here is the following basically what we want to do maybe if we want a more performant way of doing this we can create another uh, array list we can do it the same it really doesn't matter right so we will delete this okay and we will show we will only show the the text input when the user clicks on a day so we're gonna go to activity main.xml and on the text input so on the added text we're gonna set it to uh well actually what i'm going to do here is i will create a linear layout that will um contain these two elements the button and the added text so i'm gonna say linear layout with much parent height wrap content and orientation vert vertical sorry vertical okay and inside this linear layout i will move these two uh elements the button and the added text okay so why do i do this well i want to hide these when it's not needed so i'm gonna set it uh visibility to gone and as you can see it disappears okay but i have to also show it when it's needed so i have to add this an id so i'm gonna say id 
and I'll set it to um, day content or yeah mm, we can really think of a better name of this but I'll just call it day content so day content so the content of the selected day and I'll go to main activity.java and since all I want to do with that is show and hide, I will create a view. So you can say final view, find view by ID, r that ID dot, um, what was the name again? I forgot. Oh, day content. Okay, so day content. Oops. I forgot to, to assign a name. So final view day content is equal to find by id r that id that they content so every time um this is clicked i'm gonna say if they content is visible can we can we check if this is visible is visible um visible uh, um, BC, we get visibility okay if get if they can't get visibility equals to gone okay so if, if the visibility is is gone we will set um, day content that set visibility visible. Okay, basically, if it is if it's not shown, we we'll, we're saying please show it. Okay. Okay, so now we will check if that even works. So we will run the app and check if that works or not. Okay, as you can see, we have no added text whatsoever here. But if I click on a date, then this is shown. Okay, the save text and all of that is shown and, and it works. Okay, so yeah, it works great. So what else can we do here? Well, when we set on save, we have to save, but not the current thing. We have to save the, the kind of uh, these kind of things. The current year, current month, but in the in the global variables uh, kind of sense, okay. So if we want to do it in a very modular way, not really the best way, but kind of modular. We would create and and save not as strings but as integers, okay. So we want to save it as integers because we have lots of integers. So we will maybe do the following. And be, below calendar strings, I will say final. So what's going on here? Okay. So this says that we're not using it because well, we're not there yet, but that's okay. So we're gonna say final list, list of int, is that even possible? I don't think that's possible. No, but we can create an array of integers, right? So we can create an array of integers. So I'm gonna say int array, and I will call it uh, current day, and I'll set this to new int, and for test purposes, I'll set it to 30 integers, right? Okay, we can change that, we can modify that and all later. So now, when we click on save, what we have to do is the following. We will go and say um, current day, current day at zero in this case will be, will be equal to current day. Um, now, this shouldn't be called current day, this should be curled uh, uh, um, days, 
just days, you know, this is kind of better way of doing it. So I say days at zero equals to current day. So we now know the the current day, right? Now we're gonna say and we add this string, okay? That keeps the same. Now inside the unselected day change, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna check if if current day, okay, or uh, yeah, if current day equals to days at zero, okay, so if current day equals days at zero, we're gonna go and say um text input dot set text, and we will say uh, um calendar strings that get uh, zero in this case, right? So what will happen if we run this? So let's check. Oops, 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 oops. Oops, I had a typo here. So let's try it right now. So I'm running it and I'm checking how it will work. So if I click on these, I write something, I click on save text. I go to 14, nothing happens, I go back to 13, and as you can see, this is being restored. So it's working, actually. Now, if I go to 14, and I type, um, I am 14, and I click on Save Text, and I go then to 30, and then I go back to 14, it's not working because it's working only with one thing which was the, just for one element, which was the 13th. So we will fix all of these and we'll improve and add more features on the next video. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I see you in the next one. Bye.